Hi, this is John Cola with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, actually, we're going to do a juice off that I know many of you guys have been requesting and actually waiting for, and I'm actually excited to use for the first time the all new Huron H101 juicer. This is also the same as the H100 juicer sold in other countries. I think the main difference between the H101 and the 100 is actually the lack of a drip tray. Um, for a smaller footprint for those of us in the United States of America. Otherwise, as far as I'm aware, the machine is the same and sold all over the world. Now, the first thing I want to say is that I'm going to give props out to Huram, you know. Um, Huram has literally been the innovator in making vertical juicers and creating them and is probably the reason why you guys have or are able to buy a vertical juicer up to date. You know, they, they had the horizontal juicers and they basically invented the vertical style machine until other companies started knocking them off, especially now made in China and all these things. And so they've continually to improve the technology, improve the design, make it better. I visited their R&D facility many years ago, which I'm sure has only expanded because when I was there many years ago, they had a huge building and I'm sure the building is even huger now. They invest a lot of time money and effort to improving their products but more importantly also that which I respect highly for because not many companies are doing this also working with universities to get studies on and publishing the benefits of using a slow juicer like their amazing machines compared to the high speed machines that are most commonly uh, sold today you know I have a recent video I'll post a link down below uh, to studies they did with how juicing slow juice can increase your microbiome as well as have health benefits that a high speed juice does not. So props out to Huram. Thank you guys so much for keep doing what you guys are doing. Um, that being said, as much as I like Huram, and they're the reason why the Omega VSJ juicer is here as well, um, you know, there are things, some things I don't like about Huram. Number one, I don't like that I'm not able to sell the Huram in the United States for whatever reason. I've asked many times for Huram America to become a dealer for them, to represent them. And if I did, I'd probably have more videos on them. Um, but they continually deny me to be a dealer, so I still would like to be a dealer despite the downfalls. Because once again, on my channel, I, I like to show it like it is, tell it like it is, share my experiences, share my opinions about the different machines. And I'm basically unfiltered. I tell it like it is. Pros and cons, good and bad. On that same respect, I will tell you guys that I am a dealer for Omega, and the Omega VSJ843 is my favorite juicer um, that I am selling at this time, and is the one I recommend the most because it is so solid. Now, the next thing I'm going to say is that um, the the Huram here and the VSJ here, they're probably made in the same factory in South Korea. Why? Well, the reason why is because although this is an Omega VSJ843, it is actually made by Huram for Omega, right? So I don't know if that confuses you guys, but basically this is a Huram juicer with an Omega brand name on it. And uh, you know, the reason why that is important for me in particular, and I live in the United States, and of course if you live around the world, this may be a little bit different, is because the warranty is backed up by the company that has its brand name on it or that is selling it. So for example, if you buy an Omega juicer, the warranty is handled by Omega. They've been in business now in the United States for over 35, 30, 30, 35 years solid. They're one of the oldest juicing companies still in existence today. American owned and established and still running strong. Whereas the Huram, you know, uh, company in America, they've gone through a couple different distribution models in America. And, you know, they're a lot newer company um, without a strong proven track record. Right, that's number one. Number two is um, how long is a warranty? Right, the warranty is super important. Right, I have sold machines in the past where the business went out of out of out of out of out of, out of business, and then there's no more warranty. So even if you have the longest warranty in the industry, but the company goes out of business, then where are you left with the warranty? Right, you're just out of luck. Right. So here's the thing. Right, the Huram they advertise it as a 10 year warranty, which on the surface that sounds really good, but if you read the fine print, they'll tell you the warranty is 10 years on the main motor body, which, you know, in my opinion, and based on experience, the motor is the least likely part to fail on a juicer. So them warranting the warranty on the motor for 10 years is like, it's probably not going to go bad, so they're probably not going to be out of anything. The problem occurs is that a lot of times, uh, some of these top part pieces, um, you know, can break and can have problems 
in the long run, and that's actually why you will need to use your warranty. And on, on this top set here, it's only two years on the Huron. So, I mean, that's the main challenge I have with the Huron. I mean, the machines are good, high-quality machines, but they only have a two-year warranty. And when you're spending, like, this unit is $500. $500 on a machine, you have a two-year warranty. That's really short when, on the other hand, with the Omega, you could buy a machine that's $100 less. And I'll post a link down below if you want to buy this machine and learn more about it. It's basically $100 less than that guy. But this machine on the motor base, it has a full 15 year warranty. That's five years longer than the motor base on this. And then this top set, all the plastic housing, as well as the motor base, also has 15 years. That's the longest warranty in the industry. Omega knows that this machine is solid and they're not scared to offer a long warranty because they know if you use it properly like I recommend, you're gonna have many years of use out of it and it's gonna work amazingly and beautiful for you for the next 15 years. So what, divide the price, divided by 15 is the price per year. What is that, like 25 bucks a year this juicer is gonna cost you if you amortize it over all the different years. Whereas on this machine, it's basically, if the machine breaks after two years, you gotta buy parts. And let me tell you guys, these parts, these plastic parts made in Korea, South Korea, probably very inexpensive to make, but if you gotta buy them, man, they are quite expensive. An auger or a screen could cost you, I don't know, 50 to 60 dollars all these things so like you know for that reason alone that's why I really like the value that Omega provides now the next thing I'll say is customer service and we haven't even gotten to compare the juicers yet right you know and this is just from personal um, reviews that I've read online about her um you know and, and personal feedback I've gotten from customers some of my customers said they haven't gotten the best service from her um, as well as some reviews I've read online say oh, her has poor customer service. I haven't experienced that myself, so that is just literally hearsay, so I'm not going to say that's true or not. You know, likewise, on Omega, right, you could also read reviews online that says, Omega has poor customer service, which I have also read, you know, but on another hand, because I have a direct personal relationship with Omega, I can tell you guys personally, directly in the eye, that all my customers that have ever had an Omega that had have warranty issues with Omega, I have gotten them resolved 100% as long as they were legitimate warranty claims because you know if you purchase your juicer from any kind of big box store or anywhere else aside from me right you have to deal with Omega yourselves but if you buy the juicer from me aside from enabling me to continue to make these videos and share my opinions on YouTube and make the comparison videos like I do I'm basically your liaison or I will go to bat at you to make sure if you try to call Omega which is the first step and they're not helping you they're not they're not listening to you you're not getting a response then let me know and I will make sure I have special contacts in Omega that will definitely take care of my customers. You know, so that's why I'm here and that's why, I, one of the reasons why you guys should support me, other than that, you know, the reason why you should support me is because nobody else is making videos like I do in such great detail. I mean, this video probably is going to be like an hour long. I mean, I talk a lot too, but I have a lots of information to share because I want you guys to have all the information you need to make the best choice to buy the best juicer that are going to specifically meet your needs and every juice is a little bit different some juicers have these pros and these cons and everyone's a little bit different so I make the videos because nobody else really goes into depth that I do to show you guys all the pros and cons you may see things you like about the Huron you may see things you like about the BSJ which one will you end up with well I don't know you're gonna have to watch this video to pay attention and find out <laughs> alright so with all the company and the warranty Aside, let's get actually into introducing both these machines. So the Omega VSJ 843, this is a good long-standing unit, time-proven, selling for many years in the United States, and the Huron uh, H101 um, or H100, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's actually Hur Huron's brand new flagship product. This is their new evolution in design in juicers because they are removing uh, one of the parts that people like to clean the least, which is the juicing screen. This actually has a whole list. <laughs> yeah, it's H O L E holeless, um, holeless screen. So there's not. It's a plastic screen instead of a stainless steel screen with two interlocking meshes that it provides the holes. And they say this is easy cleaning. Although in a YouTube video that I saw recently, it said it took me four minutes to clean this machine. Which I'm like, man, four minutes to clean this machine? That's like longer than it takes me to clean this machine. Because to me, and this this machine is like totally dialed in for cleaning. This is the best, easiest to clean vertical juicer that I found personally. That being said, I haven't cleaned this one yet until after this video. Um, this one takes me three minutes to clean. And so, uh, and now these are both vertical single auger juicers, and they both run at the lowest and slowest RPM of any vertical auger juicer that I'm aware of that are for, that's for home use. 
They run at both 43 RPMs of a solid um, you know, motor that draws about 150 watts and they are very efficient motors and very powerful and torquey motors, right? I may have shown old videos with the VSJ when the motor would stop up juicing carrots, but as of late 2018, these issues were resolved. So if you are getting a VSJ 43, you know, it now has the more improved motor, um, you know, where it is quite solid. And we'll be testing this actually in a little bit and juicing the same exact amount of produce in both machines to show you guys the results. So uh, I guess with that, let's get into some of the specifics. So as you guys can see, this unit is a little bit more short and stocky. And so this is going to easily fit under your counters. This one's getting a little bit tall. So if you guys got to like put this underneath your kitchen cabinets, you got a counter and then you got the cabinet. I don't know. I'm not sure if exactly if this one's going to fit. Looks a little bit tall. And uh, let's go ahead um, and start taking these guys apart. So I mean, basically, the motor bases for all practical purposes, they're pretty much identical. I haven't opened them up to see and compare the windings in the motor or anything. But if we just lift these guys up, these are both heavy duty motors. Wow. And actually, I think that the VSJ motor to me seems a little more heavy just by lifting it up. And here's the thing, right? You guys invest in a good juicer made in South Korea. You guys are going to get, in most cases, a good solid machine. That's not some POS made in China. You know, some of these Chinese juicers I get shipped for, you know, demonstration purposes or for testing. And I'm amazed, like I pick up the whole box and the whole box is lighter than just this motor base here on the PSJ. I'm like, man, what do they got like a, a like a 10 cent, you know, DC motor in there that's going to wear out after, you know, 10 uses? I don't know. So these guys, of course, both these machines have a 30 minute duty cycle as far as I'm aware, which means you should only run the machine for 30 minutes and then allow it to cool off before continuing. Otherwise, you may risk premature motor failure. That being said, on my personal unit, I can say I've juiced for up to an hour. Not that I recommend that, you know, straight because I like to juice in large batches and then store it under vacuum and, uh, you know, at, at a cold temperature. I'll post the link down below if I remember to a video I made how to store your juices for up to a week. Not that I recommend that either. Um, and it's worked great, you know, without any problem. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into some of the differences between these machines because as you guys can see, the motor's fairly similar. Both run at 4.3 RPMs, all right? And, uh, so these are the top, the feed, the top sets for both machines, and they both have very similar components. Uh, the VSJ has a few more than the uh, the new model here. So let's uh, go ahead and first take off the uh, feed chute here. All right. So the first thing we're going to notice on the feed chute is on the VSJ843, it has a large feed chute, right? And on the uh, H101. You guys can see the feed chute or H100, the feed chute is much smaller, right? So I mean, you can see like the feed chute, I think it's probably like, uh, I don't know the percentage, but it's uh, larger on the VSJ, which means less cutting. Now, the thing is, um, the funnel on the, on the new model, the H100 or H101 is bigger. So I always encourage places to have a bigger funnels and um, the new H100 or H101 has a new style so as much as it has a feed chute here for the large produce items pre-cut items now can be basically put in this funnel so it's like a funnel even though it's a funnel and it just directs it down even though that you can't really use this to push something in like a large carrot or something you can put like cherry tomatoes and they'll just basically roll in which is really nice because on this machine you put the tomatoes in the little funnel area then you gotta flick it in to the unit so on one level I kinda like this style design because it is so large, um, but another, I don't like the smaller feed chute because that may hinder you on some wider fat carrots that would fit in the larger one. Now you're probably wondering, John, why do they have the larger feed chute on the one for on the VSJ and a smaller one on the Huron? Well, so as far as I'm aware, there are international safety standards, and international safety standards specify maybe Europe specify this exact size for the feed chute so that you can't get your fingers in there. And in America, we have you know maybe fatter fingers number one, but number two. Our standards are not as tight or as stringent, so they allow for a larger feed chute, you know, from what I'm aware, all right? So that's the feed chute tops. I guess the other thing I like about the new, this, this model here is that the, the feed chute is kind of translucent. You could kind of see through this to kind of see if you're getting a, a roadblock or a jam, uh, you know, with produce being stuck inside here. Whereas on the VSJ, um, you know, it's just solid black, so you're actually going to have to look down it to see if there's a difference. Now the other thing is um, the feed chute is a bit longer on this guy, so that may, may mean you could get some things jammed up or clogged up that's, if it's not going down. 
So, I don't know, pros and cons. We'll have to see how that how functionally this is because I haven't actually used it yet, all right? Next, coming out, we got the augers. So this is my well-used BSJ auger. And here's the brand new auger on the H100, H101. And, uh, you know, they're fairly similar, you know? So let me see if I'm looking at the design here. So, I mean, basically, they still got the two, two kind of, like, um, blades on both sides, which are probably about the same amount of sharpness. And if I'm just, like, looking at these side by side, these augers look like they're pretty much the same design. I mean, maybe some small differences. These are both made out of the GE Ultimate material, which is uh, eight times harder than plastic, such as melamine, that was previously used on augers on horizontal-style machines. And then underneath... Uh, you guys can see both of them are hot, kind of hollow underneath there. They have a little recess in here, which I like. Uh, to me, for, for, for me, uh, this means this gives them, uh, basically, it's like a pocket recess, which basically allows the pulp to kind of get underneath the machine so that it doesn't um, jam up your juicer um, as readily, right? Let's see, and on, on both these guys, I can easily get my finger here on the VSJ to, like, stick it in and clean it out. And on the... Uh, the Huron here, um, it doesn't quite easily go into the, the total bottom as easy, so it's a little more tighter passageway. The other thing on this machine, on the new Huron, it actually has some kind of like a silicone gasketing on the bottom of the auger, which is quite interesting. Um, that may have to do with uh, keeping, uh, I don't know, keeping pulp from getting underneath here. I'll, I'll have to see. I don't know how that exactly functions or works or why it's there yet. Next thing coming out are the juicing screens. So on the VSJ843, we have a juicing screen, and this is your standard juicing screen that's on 99% of all vertical juicers at this point. Mine happens to be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, minerally <laughs> because they've got the hard water deposits on here. But it has lots of different holes, right? So this is a pro and a con, a screen and a juicer, right? Uh, the pro is that it doesn't let the big, large particles out of the screen because all the juice pretty much has to flow through the holes or underneath. The, uh, the screen, which is a whole other topic that we won't discuss. And then, uh, then you have to clean it after it's done. Depending on the juicer you specifically get, right, some of these holes sometimes get clogged up and jam with pulp. Like most juicers I've seen, for some reason my VSJ and VSJs I've seen don't get impacted with pulp and get grounded in pulp like the other brands, uh, you know, Tribest and Kuvings, vertical juicers will get impacted with pulp and I literally have to scrape it out. With the VSJ, it never really seems to get ground in pulp, and this saves me some time when cleaning. So this is the easiest to clean screen that I'm aware of, plus it has an open bottom, which is the second generation design, um, which I like a lot instead of having a little small hole in the bottom of the screen that all the pulp must go through, okay? Now, totally different story on the H100, H101 machine here. If we pull this out, the screen is not just one part, it's actually two parts that make this work, and that is where the magic occurs. If you just put the one screen part in, it's not really going to work. So, what happens is, both these screens go together, and if you put them together, it's basically like your fingers going together, right? So, if you put your fingers together... You can see in between my fingers, there's like a little space in between, so the juice basically comes out the spaces. So instead of holes, they basically have long kind of like uh, like gaps between that are like super micro and small that I'm really, I can't really, it's hard to see through, but I guess the uh, juice gets through there. And then to clean this, you know, you'll probably have to brush it out because there may be pulp and stuff clogged in here, but it's going to rel relatively clean very easily, and that's where their easy cleaning comes in. Uh, for this machine because you literally probably, I mean, I would still scrub this because if you don't scrub it with soap and water after every use, you're going to get probably hard mineral deposits and also juice deposits caked on. Even if you don't see it, there's microscopic juice particles that are attaching on that over time will build up, which then may cause you guys some problems with this uh, system operating properly, in my opinion, but I haven't seen that yet because I haven't even used this machine yet. I, have, I, just, I just washed it before the first use. Uh, so that's the screens, and this screen, the this, this set is definitely heavier than this guy. You know, I prefer my juice kind of coming through a stainless steel screen. Uh, once again, I don't have any experience using this one. Uh, maybe this one's going to be more durable than this. I mean, I don't really know. We're going to have to see. Now, the part missing from the H100 or H101 is this automatic wiping blade. So this automatic wiping blade has silicone uh, flaps on here that then basically uh, the screen gets sandwiched into, and as the machine is running, this wiping blade is basically spinning around. Not only is it fun to look at, <laughs> number one, uh, but number two, you know, I believe it has to do, have a functional job as well. 
um, the silicone like um, little uh, wipers on here go around and actually literally wipe the screen clean like think if you had to drive your car around without windshield wipers right you wouldn't see very well and that's what I believe this screen this wiping blade does to this uh, you know screen here it helps keep the juice off helps keep the pulp build up residue off the screen so that cleaning is going to be a little bit easier also may increase your yield um, as well so I kind of like that although it is one more part to clean unlike most other vertical juicers uh, the VSJ wiping blade does not have gearing teeth on the bottom of the screen. This is something I really like because getting in between all those gearing teeth can be a pain to clean. Um, instead, the screen is run by the auger. As an auger is running around, it basically moves the, um, the wiping blade because of these tabs on the top of the auger. So you've got to make sure you assemble that properly each and every time. Okay? And there's no such wiping blade on the H100 or H101. And that could be a pro or con. I'm not really sure. You know, traditionally, I'm not a big fan of the machines that don't have the wiper blades because they were originally introduced with wiper blades. And there's a reason why they have wiper blades. And now some of the companies, especially inexpensive juicers, are, are deleting them uh, like they did actually delete this on the H100 or H101, um, even though this is a more higher priced and high end machine. All right. Now, the last part, of course, is the juicing bowl. This is where all the magic happens, where the juice comes out. Now, mine is completely stained because this is totally, um, I've been using this so much. I will have an upcoming video on how to remove the stains from the juicer. Well, I'm actually going to remove all the stains off this. Um, but until then, that's why this looks like this. Otherwise, if you guys get one, it's going to look new, obviously. But, you know, here's the thing, right? I like this machine because there's no gearing on the bottom. It's relatively easy to get in there and clean. Um, this little middle section is pretty low, so it's a really easy to clean and get in there. Now on the H100 or H101, you know, it's a little bit deeper in here to get into. Um, probably about the same amount to clean. It's fairly easy. They got a nice spigot in here. The thing about the spigot, it has, it has a, a, the cap that allows you to uh, do mixing inside the juicing bowl, which I do not recommend because I believe the yield will go down based on my testing. Um, although it does look cool, I would always leave that open except for cleaning when, when you're done juicing to prevent drips, I would close that up. Um, I do like that actually this, this uh, right here, the little hinge thing has been improved because actually on the VSJ, this has been a problematic feature I have seen that uh, my customers as well as myself have broken this, but Omega is covering this under warranty, um, you know, should it uh, break, uh, you know, due to no fault of your own. And yeah, so... Um, Oh, and then the outlet port where the pulp comes out. I like the VSJ outlet port because I can get my picky in there and really easily, unlike some of the other newer Hurl machines, I can get my finger in there to clean all the pulp out. And on this machine, you have basically a little um, silicone flap right here that I just pulled out. It should be out when you're cleaning, but always pushed in while you're juicing. And the job of this flap is to basically keep some back pressure, keep that wet pulp inside the machine until it gets fully wrung out, until the, until which then, at, to, at what time, the uh, pulp will basically push it through and then the pulp will flow out. Now, this is the most problematic area on any vertical slow juicer because the pulp comes down straight and then actually has to make a right angle turn. This is where if you are not, are, are not pre-cutting your celery and leafy greens especially, you could have huge problems. And if you are not using the machine properly, this machine will make excessive pulp in the juice. Um, I would recommend you guys watch my video juice like a pro in any vertical slow juicer. I'll put a link down below where I share like I think my 10 tips on how to juice in one of these machines to get the best performance each and every time whether you have the Omega VSJ or any other brand including the Huron. My tips and techniques will always ensure you have the best time juicing. If it's still not working after my techniques then you have a juicer issue like maybe not a good quality juicer. All right. Now on uh, the Huron um, once again, they also have that flap, but this flap is a little bit different, a little bit redesigned. So, uh, you know, can I, I can kind of get my finger in here, um, you know, a little bit, but it doesn't go all the way in. But that's not really a concern on the new Huron because you have basically this flip down lid that now you can basically open this up all the way and completely clean inside here, which is something actually I like a lot. Um, and then they basically have this preset silicone flap that you basically uh, don't need to adjust. I mean, you just, it's either uh, locked closed or locked open, and that's pretty much how it works. I don't think this is adjustable. I guess it can be removed for cleaning, but
but then you'll always want to have it in there. You probably want to remove it for cleaning and then uh, have it in there when juicing. If you do not include this part during the juicing process, you will get a much wetter pulp, which means you're not going to get as high of a yield. Um, this part also is a bit heavier than this guy over on this side. Um, I like that this is also a one piece unit, so it's 100% you know, um, one piece, like this uh, clear uh, Eastman Triton BPA free material. Once again, this is also the Eastman Triton BPA free material on the bowl. A little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, but also it's a two piece where they have this black piece uh, basically screwed down and into the first piece. So pros and cons. Oh, the other thing I will say is that it looks to me like on this unit here, there's a built-in um, like um, magnetic uh, sensor here that if the machine's not properly uh, set up correctly, it will not turn, turn on. So it's kind of like really hidden in here really nice. On the VSJ, there's a magnetic sensor in the top of the machine. So just a little bit different way to do it, and I'm glad they're using magnetic sensors instead of, uh, you know, some machines actually use a mechanical mechanical switches, which I'm not a hu super huge fan of, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and assemble these machines. They're very simple, very easy to assemble. Once again, make sure we got our little flap in there. We're going to put this uh, juicing bowl right on top. We're going to go ahead and take our wiping blade and take our juicing screen and basically push that in all the way and uh, basically this will extend out past the wiping blade then we're going to go ahead and take uh, this whole assembly and drop it in and we're going to just rotate it a little bit until it drops down and into place then we're going to take the auger noting the two little wing tips and the uh, recess here in the wiping blade and we're going to drop this down in there and uh, spin this close and then drop it down in there so it uh, seats fully. Then we're going to take this uh, final piece and on this piece behind the, uh, the, the chute is a little uh, orange arrow. You're going to line up that arrow with the exact uh, back of the machine here and then you're going to rotate this arrow to line up with the other arrow on top. This will ensure that your machine is properly aligned and that the safety interlock switch is engaged in which case you can turn this on. Likewise, on the Huron H100 or H101, you can take this whole unit and basically you set this uh, a bowl on where this uh, outlet port is, which is where the pulp comes out, drop that in. Next piece, you're going to take the uh, outer screen and drop it in with the inner screen. And they got these tabs on the screen here that basically drop into tabs on the bowl. So we're just going to drop that in, make sure it drops into place. Once again, take the auger. Drop that into place, rotate it down, seats fully down. We're going to take the top, and on the top here, we're going to line it with the unlock, which is right here. And then we're going to lock it all the way to the straight forward to the lock. And then we're set up and ready to work. Both these machines have a three position switch on, off, which is a solid, and then a momentary reverse. And that's the uh, on there. On the VSJ, so you can kind of hear it's pretty quiet, it has like a little clicking sound. Some sound is normal when using the VSJ. I do not recommend running any juicer empty like this for any particular time other than when you're turning this machine on and you're working and you're going to drop the first piece of produce in, right? Um, on the Huram, turning this on, it's a little more, on some levels it's more quiet because literally all that when you turn it on is an auger running. But if you notice, I don't know, I could notice this, but I see the, the whole top set housing moving a little bit, you know? And we're going to turn it off and once again on the VSJ turn it on I mean once again if you look very closely you can see the auger of this whole body housing like moving just a tiny bit probably less than the Huram but don't be alarmed you know every juicer will have some amount of movement just based on the design you know it's totally normal <laughs> if it's so off that it doesn't allow the ju juicer to work because it, it, it trips the safety switch then that's a problem but you know, I'm not alarmed when there's a little bit of movement or play in the machines. That's actually just how they're designed, all right? So yeah, that's basically the run through. I guess the other things I wanna say is that both these machines that I'm not showing today come with pictures uh, and cleaning brushes and instructions that you guys should read before your first use. And the other thing I will say is that the, the H100 or H101 also comes with an additional um, you know, parts for the for the screen here, so I think uh, the other part, instead of getting this part here, which is the fine screen, or for the juicing screen, they also have a coarse screen that'll actually let more pulp through the screen. I think that's like a different color. I think that's like the uh, ye yellow color. 
and then they actually they have a, a blank plate that doesn't even use a screen you just put the blank plate in here and then you able to make sorbets and nut butters in the Huron which is really nice right um, on the flip side Omega does not come with um, these although there is a coarse strainer that most people are not aware about that you can purchase for this machine with larger holes so if you want to make you know a juice with more pulp in it then comes out with a fine sieve or strainer or juicing screen you guys could do that and uh, this machine does not have the option to have uh, you know a solid blank plate I have requested it many times but Omega fails to come out with one uh, but what, what I do have and what is approved is I do have a video I'll post a link down below on how you guys can make sorbet and nut butters in the VSJ 43 if you do it as I specify in the video this is actually going to be covered under warranty according to the president of Omega when I last uh, spoke with him as far as I'm aware but it's important you follow my directions to the T so technically both these machines have the same functionality this one just happens to include it but it also costs a hundred dollars more to get these extra parts um, but also you're also losing 13 years on all the plastic parts on the warranty all right so I think that's the basics of both these machines I don't know if I could really say anything else I pretty much covered it all um, I guess next is I want to see actually how they perform when juicing the exact same items so let's go ahead and weigh out the produce we'll be juicing and let's get juicing with the Huron and the Omega VSJ alright so now we're ready to juice we got the two scales with the organic produce that we're gonna be juicing today and the first step is to make sure we have a fair fight let's go ahead and do a weigh in alright let's go ahead and do a weigh in to make sure we have a fair fight over on the scale on the side of the Huron 1903 grams and over on the scale on the side of the VSJ 843 1903 grams to show you guys it's even on both scales let's go ahead and back up a little bit we should have 1903 on both scales and basically we have the same exact ingredients two romaine hearts three organic apples bunch of organic carrots hothouse grown cucumber and then over there we got uh, organic beet and a little bit of ginger as well. Same exact thing, exact same duplication measured out step by step to make sure we have a fair fight. And once again to verify that we do, we do. So let's get juicing. Alright, so now we got the weigh-in accomplished. Let's go ahead and move these scales out the way. And what we'll be doing is I'll oops, lost an apple. What I'll be doing is I'll probably be juicing in the Omega VSJ843 first, and I'll show you guys the whole process. Super simple, super easy to juice. A lot of the produce items can be put in whole, like the carrots. We'll have to probably cut the cucumber in half and slice the ginger up into little pieces, and we'll do that on both machines. Um, you know, despite, uh, you know, they're both vertical juicers, so you need to properly prepare, cut up your produce, drop it in, not use a pusher. In my opinion, I do not encourage the use of pushers with the vertical juicers because they are basically self feeding. If you pre cut certain items properly, such as celery and leafy greens, and you pre-cut generally. Romaine not necessarily have to be pre-cut. It's not as fibrous as some of the other, uh, you know, like kale or charred stems, for example. Apples will need to be, keep, be cut up as well. But yeah, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and time that for you guys um, to show you guys actually how long it takes. We're going to go ahead and put this over here, show you guys actually what I'm cutting. I'll try to explain it just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and put on this stopwatch uh, so you can see how long the juicing process takes. I kind of I kind of guess that the juicing process will take pretty much the same time on both machines. Now what I will be doing is I will be also using a sieve to strain out the juice. Uh, it has been said on some of the online reviews, especially for the Huron here, that it produces lots of pulp, puts lots of pulp in the juice, and I don't know the truth because honestly this is my first time using it. I've used the VSJ a lot and many other vertical juicers a lot. And the VSJ of all my testing actually puts the least amount of pulp into the juice. Um, although the pulp put into the juice can be grossly inflated if you're not using it properly. So make sure you watch my video down below. Juice like a pro in any vertical slow juicer. Use my techniques. It's going to minimize the pulp that's put in a juice. And of course, any slow juicer, whether it's a twin gear, horizontal auger, or vertical auger, they will all put more pulp in the juice than a high speed juicer ever will. But in addition, the slow juices will make a significantly higher polyphenol and antioxidant content juice, in my opinion, and also based on scientific research that I've seen. So we are going to use a sieve here to strain things out, all right? I guess uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and hit the start button. 
on here and we're just gonna go ahead and get juicing as fast as I possibly can. All right, ready? One, two, three, start. All right, so first we're gonna go ahead and take some apples here. Just gonna slice them up into pieces. And uh, we're not gonna turn the juicer on just yet until I get some pieces ready to go. Go ahead and turn that on. We'll start dropping an apple in there first. We're gonna take like literally seriously a couple you know pieces of romaine lettuce and just uh, drop that in the machine there. Our ginger should be pre-cut against the grain. Slice it in. And we're gonna basically rotate through all our produce items until we run out. After we put a few things in, then we want to drop a carrot in, and this is why I really love the vertical juicers, because literally you can drop the carrot in. While it's working on that, you can basically multitask and cut up other things. So we're cutting up the cucumber in half right now, and then we're probably going to put a, a quarter of that cucumber right in, just drop it right in. Probably going to go ahead and drop in a few more romaine leaves in there. Let those kind of drop in. Uh, might need a little bit of assistance and pushing to get them to come out. You will want to be aware of the pulp as it's coming out, as well as the juice, the sieve does not fit on exactly this container as well as it should in my opinion. So I'm gonna be mindful of that. And we're gonna go ahead and continue to juice. So uh, in order to save you guys some time, I'm just gonna basically rotate through all the ingredients and get them into the juicer. And we're gonna speed this up for you guys to save you guys some time, because otherwise it's gonna, just gonna be me sitting here feeding, feeding in a lot of different produce items in the juicer. That might be kind of boring. All right, so here's the last piece of carrot dropping right in the machine. We've just been uh, basically uh, tapping down the stove the whole time, and it's definitely caught a lot of pulp in there, and we're pretty much done juicing, as you guys can see, out of pulp, or out of produce. And uh, once you put that last produce item in the juicer, you want to let it run another, I don't know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. Until the pulp stops flowing out, it's still flowing out, and I still see drips kind of getting uh, funneled out of the machine. So we're going to go ahead and let that run just a little bit more until it's all done. All right, so I think it's pretty much all done. The final step I like to do, we'll go ahead and turn off the juicer, and we just like to sometimes pick up the top set and just kind of tip it up, which it looks like there's no more juice in there. So that's pretty much uh, going to be our yield right there and the pulp created on the VSJ. And we could go ahead and stop it. We got uh, 8 minutes, 19 seconds to make a juice. It looks like we got over uh, maybe like around 1,100 milliliters. And maybe I should have stopped it right when I was done putting everything through because it wasn't fair to keep it running that I might, you know, leave this one running more or less. Anyways, we got 8.19. Uh, I expect about the same amount of time on the Huram. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, try this one here. Okay, let's go ahead and hit start, and we'll start cut up the apples just like the other one. So I think immediately I'm just going to go ahead and put this in a fast forward mode for you guys since I already explained the same process, and I'll be doing the same exact method that I used in the VSJ843. So let's go ahead and turn this baby on, and uh, make sure this is all set up. Open and open this, and let's just go ahead and drop an apple in there. So let's see, I tried to drop it in that feed chute and then it kind of went in, but it kind of got stuck a little bit. So I think that smaller feed chute may slow me down a little bit, but I don't think it'll be too, anything uh, super significant. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue to juice and we'll speed this up for you guys to save some time. All right, so I'm almost done juicing in the Huram H101 juicer, or should I say H101 if I was in the UK. You know, there's a lot of people that make videos online, and I think that's great that they're promoting products, but I really like, you know, they, a lot of them are, in my opinion, fluffy videos because they don't really go through the juicing process, compare side to side to show you guys the difference. They just might say, 
oh, this is good, this is good, it sounds good. And yeah, on paper, the manufacturers will always make their juicers sound good. That is their job, and I do not fault them for that. Definitely, this machine, um, you know, is easy cleaning compared to this juicing screen. And I'll be timing how long it takes me to clean this juicer in a second. But based on juicing, I'm going to say a few things just from the experience of juicing the same exact produce in both machines. Um, the smaller feed chute, to me, that's a pain, especially on, on of throwing in the things like the, the leafy greens or romaine hearts. Like this really stopped me up. I kind of did like the drop down effect. Um, if you're juicing certain items like cherry tomato, like I see, would just be a dream juice in this machine. But other things, maybe not so good. Um, I also did get a lot of backing up in this little feed chute area, so I'm not exactly sure why that is. The design on the augers are very similar, but I, I seem to have personally got less backup and less clogging in the VSJ maybe also because I could see what's happening, and I'm like, it's not going in, but the VSJ, I, I didn't really have to like play with it that much. Everything seemed to go in uh, fairly easily. In addition, I've been having, I mean, I shook that one down a lot just because this is not fitting on properly, but I've really had to, uh, you know, <coughs> Um, shake this one down significantly because man there is probably more pulp in this sieve than any other vertical single auger juicer that I've ever tested and this is not a joke except maybe some of those ones from China that are really low quality not to say that because there's pulp in the juice this is low quality maybe if you like a full body juice and in my opinion more like a smoothie <laughs> maybe this is the machine for you and this is the fine sieve or the fine strainer um, you know attachment that they include. I think that we're pretty much done now. We're gonna go ahead and stop that So stopping this looks like we got 9 11. I was yakking a little bit So I would say that they're about they're about the same time Maybe this one took a little bit more, but that's not really consequential, you know um, But yeah, this one took definitely more time so that they like screw this as it's going in definitely quiet I, I like that a lot um, And once again, we're gonna go ahead and take this top set off and just tip that down and uh, get any final residual uh, residue or pulp in there. Also, it didn't have a wiping blade, so I'm kind of seeing, you know, there's some uh, re residue at the bottom there. But let's go ahead and, uh, you know, shake this down, and we got a really huge pulp mass in there. And look at the difference in the color of the juice. So that's quite interesting. Like, I wonder if one juicer's grinding better than the other, because this one seemed to have a little bit more red pigments than this one that doesn't. Um, it's very interesting. So we're going to try to shake that down a little bit more get some of the juice out of that and then uh, let's see what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and compare the yields for you guys side by side so you guys can see which juicer made more juice the hundred dollar less and 13 year longer Omega VSJ or the all-new pinnacle of her um, technology the H 101 or H 100 depending on where you live let's go ahead and do a close-up all right here's a close-up of both juices that were made Omega VSG 43 looks like we're at a thousand milliliters and then maybe about a hundred milliliters above that. So that to me is like 1100 milliliters. Also, I want you to denote the color of the juice. I'm going to try to do both juices on the screen at the same time. Can you guys see that? Like to me, clearly the Omega VSJ juice looks a lot deeper, richly pigmented. And that may be because, I don't know, maybe the screen holes, because of the holes, let more pigments through or... It grinds better. I'm not exactly sure why that occurs. Once again, this is my first time using the Huram. And over on the Huram, you know, it's a lot more kind of like, I don't know, oranges. It doesn't have as much of the red, which means to me that beets were not as effectively juiced into the juice, which is interesting. But then looking at the yield, the yield is a tad over 1,000 milliliters. So maybe like 1,030 milliliters compared to 1,100 milliliters on the VSJ843. So definitely through the yield test, I will definitely have to say confidently that the VSJ8431, it also took a little less time, but it's pretty much the same time. But look at this. Look at the difference of the pulp. And I'll weigh that out in a minute. This is the pulp generated in the VSJ, and that is a quite respectable amount. This is probably the lowest amount on a vertical slow juicer that I've seen because I've tested a lot of them. But now if we go over to the Huram H101, look at that pulp blob. Oh my God, that's insane. Now... Just looking at that, it doesn't look like a lot, but let's go ahead and show you both at the same time. That is a major difference, man. Maybe if you want to pulp your juice and you got an extra 100 bucks to spend, go for the H101 or H100, depending on where you live in the world. Um, but if you don't like pulping the juice, much like me, and you don't want to strain it or sieve it out, because this really, that's not a lot of pulp. That could be mixing your juice, you'll probably barely even recognize it. 
So yeah, that's incredible. Um, Haram H101, $100 more, made less juice, and made a lot more pulp. So let's find out how much more. All right, next, let's go ahead and weigh the pulps that was created, because you guys can clearly see the for the yield test, actually, the uh, VSG843 made, I don't know, at least 70 more milliliters of juice, in my estimation. Uh, let's see, we're going to go ahead and turn these scales on here. And uh, let's see, the pulp on the Huram, we, it's set to zero grams. Boom! 125 grams of pulp, and I think what, the overall weight was, what, 1900 grams? So that's like, at least like, what, 10% of the, of, the, of the juice? No, that's less than 10%. But uh, anyways, it's a good percentage. Anyways, in the VSJ pulp, right, dump that pulp out. All right, got all that pulp out. <laughs> wow, this is 21 grams of pulp. Look at that, <laughs> 125 grams of pulp, 21 grams of pulp, pulp. <laughs> in the Haram H100 or H101. Wow, that is completely incredible. Like, I don't think I've ever seen this much pulp created by a slow vertical juicer. I mean, even the Kuvings that's known to make more pulp, I don't think it would make this much pulp. So that really shocks me. Wow. So I guess the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and taste test the juices. I always like to taste test. Sometimes my taste buds can tell me something. Sometimes it can't. I'm not like a super taster, like a friend of mine that I had that I had a while ago. But you know, I can tell the basics. So once again, this juice really nice. Um, you know, nice deep, more reddish color. Mmm. Nice and smooth. Tastes like a really nice, fine, cold-pressed juice. Not tasting a lot of particulate in there, uh, just due to the way the VSJ works, as well as the sieve we use to uh, strain out the juice as it's being created. Once again, let's go ahead and try the H101 or H100 juice. To me, once again, this is a little bit more orange, not quite as red or deep red in color, which would mean this one contains more betalanes. You know, this is my... Uh, I don't know, unobjective, personal view of the juice <laughs> based on the color alone. Let's go ahead and taste this guy. Hmm. To me, this tastes a little bit more watery, which is quite interesting. I'm not exactly sure why, and that just may be in my head. So don't take this, take this as gospel, actually. Hmm. To try this one again. Uh, maybe the juices realistically taste the same, so I'm not really going to say anything different other than the color. Clearly, this one's more deeper red. Now, I want to show you guys actually what has to be cleaned after you're done juicing, because I know cleaning is a big chore for many people, but rest assured, you know, the VSJ is the easiest vertical slow juicer that I have found to clean to date. That being said, I haven't cleaned this one yet, so we'll find out. But basically, this one's super easy to clean. We basically have the top set, as you guys can see, um, you know, the top shoot, hardly anything to clean. The auger, also, once again, fairly easy to clean. You will denote on there when you do juice carrots, there will be like a bluish, greenish tinge to the auger. This is the pigments of the carotenoids staining the Ultim auger. To get this off, you need to clean it right after you're done with soap and water and a nice little uh, nylon scrub brush. Underneath the auger, there will always be some pulp, uh, you know, in there. Not a big deal. You will have the uh, the wiping blade, which is very easy to clean, as well as the juicing screen, which also I want you guys to look at carefully because I do show juicing screens on other videos as well. But as you guys can see, there is very little pulp being clogged into the holes. I mean, this thing almost looks clean. I could almost just rinse this underwater, you know, outside and inside. All this stuff will melt away with a really quick, you know, dish brush. Brush around basically once or twice, and that'll dislodge most of the pulp. Sometimes, depending on what you're juicing, I may have to clean it more or less. And then once again, the housing here, it's, it's, there's not a lot of pulp in there, guys. There's some pulp at the bottom here, mostly clean on the inside. You have to clean this out, but I can basically take my finger in there and pop all this out and wash all this up. And I've timed myself multiple times cleaning the VSJ43. It takes me about three minutes, honestly. All right, next, let's go ahead and take a look at the H. 100 or H101. Uh, once again, we got that same top set coming right out, and similar thing, you know, very easy to clean. 
Although, you know, this has a straight through chute. This has like this multi-level chute, maybe a little bit more harder to clean than the other one. Also, this is just a larger piece. So there's more passageways and area, area that you will have to clean as well on that guy. Uh, next, we got the auger coming out. And once again, the auger, uh, you know, a little bit more pulp stuck in the auger that didn't go through the machine. But on a nice note, there's no pulp underneath the auger as I had thought. I think that gasket is in there so that no pulp gets underneath the auger, which could be a pro or con. Next, we got the, uh, the juicing screen assembly. Let's see which I could pull out whole. And then as you got the juicing screen assembly, instead of one screen to clean, you now have <laughs> two. <laughs> All right. So as you guys can see, we got this uh, screen here. And these are just basically the slits with the holes. And I haven't cleaned this yet, so I don't know how long it's going to take. But I can imagine I would basically blast water through here. But even though if you blast water through here, I would always encourage you guys to actually use a, a dish brush and scrub it down a little bit with soap and water. Very important. Don't just run water through your juicer, guys. Um, the pigments will stain the plastic. I know they can't stain the Altum auger plastic. You know, this may be Altum or some other kind of like really strong plastic material that could also stain. And guess what? If you guys are getting stains, that means there is part particles from the juices basically attaching onto. It's kind of like painting the walls of your house, and you could put layers of paint on the on the wall. If you scratch one layer off, you'll see the the color that the previous owners had painted the house. If it was pink or black or whatever and the same thing if you don't clean this each and every time although you could just wash it and rinse it out you will get buildup and layering and caking on over time which can reduce the performance of the machine and cause problems in the long run so i do not recommend you do that despite having this as an easy clean machine i would totally just still brush this off and now i have two uh surfaces to clean and some of these areas have like these nice little channels that may be difficult in the long run to clean because i could see you know, pulp and juice kind of getting stuck in the channels, which may be harder to clean than this juicing screen that's basically all same one level basically, and these are like kind of multi-level pieces. And then once again, on this uh, uh, juicing uh, bowl here, fairly easy to clean. Once again, pretty similar to the, the uh, VSJ, but the nice feature about this is you can just basically drop this thing open, and now this cleans really easily. This has got to be the easiest um, ejection port chute to clean on any vertical slow juicer because it's the first of its kind that I've seen and otherwise it's going to clean up really easy. I think the next thing I want to do for you guys actually off camera I'm going to go ahead and clean up this guy and I'm going to assemble it back as it was fully assembled because I've uh, basically taken this from an assembled standpoint to fully clean drying in the dish rack in three minutes. So we're going to fully assemble this and then I'm going to go ahead and take it over to the sink off camera and clean it up and, and time it and see how long it takes me and I'll come back with you uh, with my timer stopwatch with how long it actually took. So I just got done cleaning the Huron H100 or H101 wherever in, where in the world you live and it took me 2 minutes and 19.7 seconds. So that's pretty darn quick because on average the VSJ843 takes me 3 minutes but what I want to do now is we're going to go ahead and off camera once again we're going to go ahead and build this back up like it was and then we're going to go ahead and clean this one and see how long it takes me today <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and show you guys the time all right just got done cleaning the vsj 843 and guess how long it took me <laughs> two minutes and 15 seconds so it took me four seconds quicker <laughs> that being said you know what i'm going to say is this i mean Pretty much these are about a wash to clean in my opinion. Now I didn't clean like, you know, the juice catch cups which may take another 45 seconds and I was working as fastly and diligently as possible. Also did not clean the sieves or, uh, you know, clean up all my other uh, bowls and things. It was just mainly the juicing part. So what I'm going to say is basically it's a wash because the VSJ is a very special model. You know, the screen does not get impacted and clogged in my testing even compared to other Huron screen models. For some reason, and I'm not exactly sure why that is, I still want to figure that out because I think other companies should adopt that same screen technology or grinding technology that is making that all work. So now we're going to get down to my summary of what I think you guys should do. What juicer won in this juice off comparison? And to me, I don't have to make up the answer. The answer is clear. Clearly, the VSJ843 made 70 milliliters more juice. It made more juice, right? It made 100 less grams of the pulp here, as you guys can see. I mean, I, I'm not faking this stuff. We started with the exact same amount of produce. 
It took me the same exact time to clean, right? The VSJ843 is $100 less <laughs> than the H101. In addition, it has a 13 year longer warranty and it's backed up by Omega who's been in business in the United States for over 30 years now. To me, this is a no brainer, right? Which one are you gonna choose? For me, I'm gonna choose the uh, Omega VSJ843, has a proven track record, although I love that Huron is coming out with new technology and making it supposedly easier to clean. Um, you know, I'm gonna stick with the old tried and truths, like that old car that you have that you just won't give up because you know it's like indestructible and it works so good. That's to me is like the 843, although there's new technologies coming out and all this kind of stuff, right? Man, that guy just seriously wins the game based on my testing here today. And hopefully you guys saw the truth now as well. You know, I would encourage you guys to get the 843 if you guys are looking for the best vertical auger juicer. It is still my favorite juicer of all the vertical juicers that I continue to test over the many years. Take a link, take a, uh, you know, uh, uh, watch the video down in the link down below, which says why the VSJ is still my favorite juicer after all these years. There's a lot of reasons, I went over them a few, a few of them in this video, but there's a lot of reasons and no other juicer to date has all the exact same reasons as the VSJ. Of course, that being said, you need to use it properly, rotate your produce, pre-cut properly, don't use the pusher, don't push things in too quickly. Check my link down below, Juice Like a Pro, and any ver vertical slow juicer before you buy any vertical slow juicer so you can find out the best practices that the manufacturers unfortunately don't share with you guys so you guys get the best results, reducing the amount of pulp in your juice and giving you the best results everywhere. Of course, your results may vary depending on what you're juicing today and what I'm juicing today. Clearly showed me the VSJ843 is the superior juicer and that's the one you should get. I hope that Huram continues to improve and make their products better. I do know that there are many now Chinese manufacturers knocking off the Huram style screen, the, you know, the screenless design with like two interlocking pieces of plastic. And personally for me, I'm not sold on that. I think a good solid screen, which has been around forever in juicing, is still the way, I mean, due to the, the, the pigment color of the juices. Also the cleaning, I really did not like having to clean in between all the fins in that screen. I'd much rather clean that one plane of juicing holes that barely gets clogged in the VSJ843. So that's pretty much it for this episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work. That allows me to continue to buy Herob juicers, test them out for you guys, make videos about it, and share with you guys the truth about juicers and juicing so you guys can make the most informed decision out there. I mean, I guess the thing I would say about the Herob, if you want something that's really stylish because this has a more classic, like, squarish look, you might want to go with this because this definitely looks better, but performance-wise, I would say save your money, all right? Um... So yeah, support me so I continue my work. Uh, your purchase at discountjuicers.com enables me to continue to make my videos, to buy my organic produce, and live the amazing lifestyle that I do that I love so much. So I want to thank you guys for all you guys that have supported me, and uh, thank you guys, um, you know, who will support me in the future. You know, your support literally makes my job and makes me necessary. And if I didn't get support, I wouldn't be able to do this, and you wouldn't be able to benefit from the experience and my knowledge of all the juicers as well as being able to compare and contrast them and show you guys the truth about them because a lot of you know people may not be doing that on YouTube videos. I try to have an impartial view, although I did say my disclaimers, I am an Omega dealer, I'm not a Huron dealer, but clearly in this video you could see that the Omega was superior machine despite me being a dealer for them. But there's a reason why I'm a dealer for them because it makes some of the best doggone juicers. But not every Omega juicer is a good juicer, so be sure to check my other videos um, for more information on that. So uh, if you guys like this video, want more videos like this, hey, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also be sure to share this video with somebody else that may be considering a vertical juicer so that they could maybe steer clear, in my opinion, at this time of the, um, you know, the, the screenless design or the easy clean design that, in my opinion, is about the same time to clean as the VSJ, which is already a very easy to clean vertical juicer. Well, the easiest one that I found anyways. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days in a row where I'll show up or be learning on my YouTube channel. Always testing out new equipment and new and different juicers so you guys can find out the best juicer for you. All right? And uh, finally, be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to share with you guys all the different appliances that allow you to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, which are the best foods on the entire planet, um, as well as many juicer comparisons, vacuum blender comparisons, and even dehydrator comparisons, and maybe some new comparisons coming up for you guys real soon. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors. 